The goal for this video is to introduce you to work roles and how they are implemented. We will also briefly compare and contrast the difference of a web role and worker role. Okay, so let's begin by making a new cloud server specifically for the worker role project. So as always, we'll navigate to the Azure portal and go to Cloud Services Classic. And then we'll click on Add and we'll make a new cloud service. So we'll call it uh, Sample Worker Role. That's right, it's all lowercase, right? Sample Worker Role Proj 2018. Very long name. It's okay. We have a subscription. Use existing resource group, and we will choose my resource group and location East US. Now, unlike the earlier videos where we upload and deploy the uh, package files on the creation of the cloud service, this time we're just going to leave these values blank and just have the cloud service ready so that we can make deployments when we choose to do so. Again, we're prompted with a little pop-up saying that the deployment is in progress. So while that deployment is in progress, let's open up Visual Studio and start making a new worker role project. So inside Visual Studio, just like we did in the earlier videos when we made a web role, we'll go to File, New Project, Azure Cloud Service, and let's give this a more reasonable name. Uh, Example worker role proj. Eh, no proj required. So let's just click OK. And instead of using a web role, we will select worker role and press OK. Let it do its thing as a project is being created. And there you have it. We have a worker role. So one thing I want to show you off the default worker role is we have these trace logs right here. Worker role one is running when it's in running state. And on start, we'll have worker role one has been started and so on and so forth. So let's actually go ahead and start this application. We'll see that Azure Emulator just ran. And if you look carefully here at the output, we see that Worker role one has been started. Worker role one is running, working, 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 continually going on till it stopped. Now that should be enough proof that the worker role is going to work inside Azure once we deploy it. However, there's no way to actually see these trace logs once we deploy it. So what we can do is create a text file or a log file that's a .txt and we'll have a loop that iterates a couple times and on each iteration it'll log some messages inside of that text file that we're going to create. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the top and we're going to make some space and we're going to make an integer called num of loops. We're also going to make a string called string file path equals leave it blank for now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to public override void run right underneath the trace log. We're going to make some space and we're going to create a bool is looping and set it to true. And then we're going to make a loop, a while loop if is looping is true I'm gonna withhold from explaining some of the things that I'm gonna be typing and I'll explain it at the end after I finish typing the code ex file that ex exists this probably needs uh, I believe using using system.io that should resolve that issue Sure enough, it does. So <clears throat> going back to it, if file that exists, file path, let's do something. Uh, otherwise, 
Else if, let's do something else. And what is that going to be? It's going to be if it file that exists file path. So what we're basically saying here, or what we're going to do, is if the file under file path does not exist, let's create one and then write something to it. Otherwise, let's find that file and append something to it. Right, so we'll fill out that code. File.create, file path. And we're going to use text writer. We'll call it tw equals new stream writer file path. So open up that stream. And finally, we'll write to it. And what will we write on its first creation? Um, just created this file. I don't know why I did first letter capitalized. It's too late, not going back. TW.close, and we'll close up that file. Right? And if it does exist, then we'll type using for TW equals new stream writer file path true tw dot write line something so next while still inside this loop we're going to say after each iteration, let's decrease the number for number of loops by one or decrement it by one. And then if num of loops equals zero, we'll do something else. In this case, we're going to set looping to false so that we can break out of this loop. So one thing that we're going to change is instead of something, we're going to print a message. This loop number is num of loops plus, there you go. So on each iteration, we should see this loop number is, and then the iteration number, right? Until we hit zero and then we'll break out of the loop and then we're done writing to this log file. Now we just have one more thing to do. We want to go to public override bool on start. And what we want to do is right underneath this trace log, we want to set the number of loops. So we'll say num of loops equals, let's make it simple, five. Actually, there's one more change that we want to make as well. So with the way it's set up, this loop is going to execute extremely fast, right? So why don't we delay it a little bit between each iteration? And we'll do that by, at the start of the loop, we'll have it sleep for some time. So what is it? It's... Uh, We'll make it sleep for 20,000, right? 20,000 milliseconds, it's 20 seconds. And finally, to finish it up, let's go back to string file path, right? And we don't know what the cloud service might look like when we deploy it, right? We have no idea how many drives, whatever. Well, we do, but let's assume that we don't know. Um, so let's just pick the C drive to be safe. And we will call it logs.txt. So now we're ready to deploy. So we already covered in earlier videos how to make a deployment. For simplicity's sake, we're just going to deploy it straight through um, Visual Studio. As always, make sure you have the proper credentials. Make sure you have the proper cloud service. 
sample worker prods 2018. Um, we don't need to worry about the environment. We already covered that in earlier videos as well. Let's click enable remote desktop for all rules. We'll pick the username as Joe. The password will be capital W worker 2018. Capital W worker 2018. And we are good to go on that. Let's go to advanced settings. Example work role is fine for deployment label. Let's change the storage account to sample storage account 2018. Same one we've been using. Go to next. We will turn off app insights. Go to next. Let's review to make sure everything's right. We have the proper cloud service and we have the proper storage account. So we'll hit publish. And again, as always, it'll do its thing. It'll pop up with a little message about deployment and we'll just follow it through. We've successfully deployed the worker role into the cloud service. So let's go to the cloud service and take a look. Sample worker role project 2018. And we see that it's in running state. However, if we were to wait here for some time and continually refresh, I'm willing to bet that we're going to see it recycle, which is essentially just restarting. Let's give it a few more tries. Hopefully this doesn't take too long to catch it recycling. One hour later. Yes, so it took some time. We see that it's in recycling state. So let's try refreshing it one more time. Maybe it'll show us an error message. One eternity later. Okay, so here we have it. Wait long enough and you'll see the error message come out. So let's copy and paste this error here. Huh? So if you actually click on the instance over here, you'll see the expanded error message. So long story short, it's saying unhandled exception access to path C logs.txt is denied at system blah 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 going on. So it's an access error. You don't have the privilege. So let's take a closer look as to what's going on. As you can see, it's changed back to running state because it's recycling. It's essentially restarting itself over and over again. So let's see if the log file was actually created inside the C drive. So we'll connect to it. And the password was worker capital W 2018 so let's take a look it shouldn't be there because that's what's drawn the error let's full screen this and sure enough there should be a log file log.txt here and it's not there because we don't have the access we don't have the privileges to make it so it continually recycles so let's head back to Visual Studio and go to the service definition.csdef file, which is found under your cloud service. Let's double click on it. And right beneath where we state our worker role instance name, we're going to type runtime execution context equal elevated. So what this line is going to do is it's going to give us admin privileges so that we can execute things such as writing to the C drive directory and creating a log file. Now that we've added this runtime execution context elevated and we can run it with admin privileges, let's redeploy it. But this time we'll, we'll deploy it to staging. So we'll go back, we'll change the environment to staging Let's just double check to make sure everything else is good. And we'll change the deployment label to um, added runtime elevation. And this word elevation is giving me trouble today. Okay, so next, next, let's confirm everything's good. And we will publish this to staging. So we can clean this up, by the way. If you're wondering how to clean these previous ones up, you could just click on Remove All Completed. So we've come back to the portal. We've deployed the updated code 
for the worker role with the runtime elevation um, included into staging. We're still in production, and sure enough, as we can see, it's continually recycling, recovering role. So let's go switch to staging, and look at that, it's running. Now, we don't want to wait to see if it's going to recycle again, there's no point. Let's just RDP into it and see if that log file was created inside the C drive directory. So let's navigate over to the instance, we'll click on connect, open, connect, and the password was worker capital W 2018. Yes. And let's take a closer look inside. Okay, give it another second or two to load up so we can open up the files. Okay, we'll check inside the C drive. Turn off the log files here. So let's open up this log file. And look at that. We see the five iterations, and it is indeed logged into this log file. So the worker role is running and working, and that's a good thing. <laughs> it means that we're successful in deploying the worker role. So there's one more thing I want to compare between the worker role and the web role while we're inside the cloud service. So we'll close this log file. And we'll go back to this PC and we will navigate to the E drive and we will go to app root. And this is actually where you see the work role, DLLs and configs. So you can see that the worker role is inside the E drive, but it's an app root. So now let's take a closer look inside the worker role. Whereas web role is a web, web server instance, Let's see what happens when we go to IIS inside the worker role. What do we expect it to see? Well, clearly not the worker role instance. It has a default website. So let's browse it. Add. That's fine. But the point is there's, there's nothing here. It's just a default website here, right? We can go inside and explore, and it takes you to D drive, inet, ww root. Now, take note of this, because we're about to go inside the web role instance and compare the two differences. So here we are inside the web role, and we'll open up IAS. Let's go to sites and we have the web role instance. And if we explore it, it's under the E drive sites root zero, right? But the point is that the worker role, it has nothing staged or nothing published inside IIS. Again, going back to the earlier videos where we compared the difference between the web role and worker role. So what can we look forward to in future videos? We can further explore worker roles and web roles and different jobs and tasks that they can tackle. In addition, we could cover an uh, application that utilizes both web and worker role. And finally, we can look into doing something with startup task commands, which will allow you to um, queue some commands up or do some things rather uh, while your application is booting up.